Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for this Animode short lesson. This lesson will continue the introduction on the kingdom of God, and we'll be talking about how Jesus Christ established his church in order to continue his mission to teach, to sanctify, and to govern. If we look back at the Simple 7 lesson, number 4 in the Simple 7 is that Jesus Christ established the kingdom of God. Christ founded the Catholic Church in order to continue his work of redemption for all time. We talked about how the church does this through teaching. Now we'll talk about how the church does this through sanctifying. The, the main means of sanctification within the church are, of course, the sacraments that Jesus Christ gave to the church. Jesus Christ instituted these sacraments, and then he entrusts these sacraments to the church. The church has had seven sacraments, and only seven. These are the, the seven sacraments of the new covenant, and they can be broken down into three areas. Um, the sacraments of initiation, the sacraments of healing, and the sacraments of life and service. In this particular lesson, we're just going to focus on three, baptism, confession, and Eucharist. On the previous introduction lesson on the church teaching, we saw that there were 20 events, persons in the Old Testament that uh, foreshadowed or pointed to Jesus Christ. These, in a sense, were promises, promises of God the Father that he would send his son Jesus Christ and that his son Jesus Christ would fulfill all the promises of the Old Testament. This is very important because what we see in, the, in, in that first lesson is that God is a father that keeps his promises. Jesus Christ is that promise. He is the hope of Israel. He is the son of David. He is the son of God. Now we move into particularly Jesus Christ and we see what promises does Jesus Christ make? And Jesus Christ is going to make particular promises to his apostles and to his church. Uh, we are going to look at three of those promises, which happen to be tied to three of the sacraments. And we have to remember that with these, they are for sure things because our Lord gave the promise and our Lord does not lie. So the first of these that we will look at is uh, from John 6:57. And this is going to be regarding the Eucharist um, communion. And Jesus Christ makes this promise one year prior to the Last Supper. Um, what we see, if you read all of John, but particularly John 6, 57, is that Jesus says that he will give his flesh. Now, the apostles don't know when, they don't know how, but he does promise that he will give his flesh and that that flesh will be a sign of union between the members and himself. And so this is a for sure thing. Um, this is a promise, and this promise will be kept and will continue to be kept until he comes again. The next promise we see is in John 20, 23, and this is regarding uh, the sacrament of confession. This takes place the night of the resurrection. So Jesus Christ had risen, and then that night he appeared to the apostles, and he is going to give them a promise. He gives them the power to forgive sins. This again, like John 6, is a for sure thing. These are not maybes. These are not what ifs. These are coming from the lips of our Savior. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus Christ is truth. If truth um, here is lying, then there is no such thing as truth. Um, then we move into Mark 16, 16 regarding baptism. Again, our Lord's words to his apostles. This takes place on an important event, the ascension. So one thing we can notice about all of these is it, it regards three sacraments. They are for sure things, and um, they are coming at key events in Jesus' life. Um, his, his, his message on baptism, his command on baptism is coming at the ascension, right before he goes to heaven. Um, the, uh, his, his teaching on confession is coming right the night of the resurrection. And then um, his uh, teaching on the Eucharist is going to start in John 6, one year prior to the Last Supper, but then will, of course, connect and be completed at the Last Supper. So these are all important events of our Lord, including his passion, his passion and death, the resurrection, and the ascension. Um, so now we'll look at these actual words and what the promise does mean to me. He promises, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. What a beautiful promise this is that we eat his flesh, drink his blood, and when we do that, we abide in him. We have union with him. This is the beautiful promise of our Lord. The next promise, whose sins you shall forgive, they are 
forgiven. This is a promise to the apostles. This is a promise to our priests and our bishops that when they forgive sins, they are forgiven. This is the remission of sins after baptism. What a beautiful promise to know that we have the forgiveness of sins. And then Jesus says, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. We want to know, what do I need for salvation? To believe and to be baptized. The promise is very clear here from Jesus. If you believe and you are baptized, you shall be saved. Let's start there with that promise. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. That's great. What happens if I sin after baptism? The sins you shall forgive are forgiven. That's another beautiful promise fulfilled. How do I know if I'm in union with God? He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me. These three promises are for sures. They are not maybes. They are not what ifs. We don't have to wonder. These have been told to us by our Lord and they are true and will stay true. These promises were given to us by our Lord. Uh, remember, with all of the sacraments that you see there on the left, these sacraments were instituted by Jesus Christ and entrusted to the church. The church is our loving mother. And it is through the sacraments that the church will give her children the very life of God. If we think of how a mother will give birth to a child, how a mother wants health for her children, and how a mother wants food for her children. Um, this is the primary concern, I think, of any parent, that um, once their child is brought into this world, that they will be healthy and they will be well fed. This is also true of the church, and the church continues to sanctify all of us, the members of the church, and wants to sanctify the entire world um, by baptism, by confession, by the Eucharist, so that these children of the church will be born, will be healthy, and will be well fed. Thank you for joining me for this Animode short lesson, continuing the introduction on the kingdom of God, um, that kingdom that was established to teach, to sanctify, and to govern. We are so thankful for this church that Christ has founded in which we can be made holy, we can conform more and more to the likeness of Christ and be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I encourage you to check out the rest of this series. Uh, you'll see that in the playlist. And also check out our Animode card game, uh, which will walk you through um, all the typology, especially the teaching part of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.